Well, now it is our privilege to have a special guest, Terry Sherbineau. We'll hear how she started her own initiative to connect and encourage older members in her community during the pandemic. Welcome to the 700 Club Canada, Terry. So glad to have you here. Hi, good to be here. Well, tell us a little bit about the initiative you started and why you are passionate about the older adult community. Well, I ended up in the ministry doing, um, working with our older adults. It was just our older adult pastor had left and we needed someone to fill in. So there I was, I decided to take it on and I thought this will be a great ministry. Um, and then COVID hit. And I thought, oh my goodness, what am I going to do with these people? They love to gather. They love to be together. They enjoy a meal together. And all of a sudden, it was completely gone. And I thought to myself, there's got to be something I can do. So, Bill, I came up with this incredible idea. Okay. I mean, it's way beyond what you could ever imagine. <laughs> I picked up the phone and started calling people. I realized that they needed to connect just as much as I did. And that together we could listen to each other, we could talk, we could, we could cry, we could pray, we could just be together and on the phone. So it was, um, that's what I've been doing for over a year now. And that may be once a month, it might be twice, depending on what has gone on in their lives. And there's about 120 or so older adults in our congregation. Oh, I love that. Well, I love that story because you were faithful. An opportunity availed itself and you stepped in, but also the fact that you weren't willing to be limited by anything to do this passion in your heart. So can you just tell us a brief story of someone maybe who's been helped or a great story of a connection point that you had as a result of this? Well, I think that comes almost every time I talk to someone. Right. There's a great response by them in the end saying, thank you. Thank you so much for calling. To me, I'm just phoning, just wanting to be involved in their lives, and I'm concerned about what's happening within them. But they they automatically, at the end of the call, say to me, thank you. It's just been wonderful talking to you. Now, another story is one day at church, when we were back in, remember when we were in back in for a few, what, what a week or two? <laughs> just a yeah. little bit. Yeah. Um, and an older gen gentleman brought me a note. He said, Terry, this note is from... And one of the men in the congregation, he wants you to have it. So I opened it up, and in that note, he wrote how he had never had anyone call him, a pastor, pastor's wife, anyone ever. And now this man is 93 years old who's writing this note to me. And he said, you don't know how much I appreciated you just doing that. Mm. So that's been an ongoing person that I've had contact with, and I'm getting to know his story. And their stories are so rich and full. I, I love that because it speaks to the, just the power of presence. And mm -hmm. so, and I think we all need that no matter what age we are at. So maybe remind us, uh, for those of us viewing today, some of the common challenges that maybe some of our older adults are facing um, and maybe some things that we don't always understand or, or a value. I think that they um, they believe they're a forgotten generation. Right. I've heard that a bit in my conversations where they'll say to me, well, I didn't even think you cared, or I thought maybe we were just going to be forgotten. I think they uh, also perceive that a segment, just a segment I'm not, of society holds a view that they have very little to offer. Mm -hmm. I think that's what they feel. Sometimes they feel like, what do I have to offer? I'm this age now. And so they struggle with that and knowing their place. And I do believe the church body needs them. They are so, such a wealth of information, of uh, support, encouragement. So I think those are two things that they possibly struggle with. Yeah, we can learn so much from their own experiences. And I think you're right. I think we just assume that someone's taking care or looking out for them. And sometimes that's not true, is it? No, it's not true. So maybe tell me something that you're learning yourself personally in some of these interactions and these conversations. Like, what are, how are you growing in your own faith as a result of stepping out in this way? I think they encourage me. Mm. I'm picking up a phone, phoning, trying to, is thinking I'm going to encourage them. Um, but I am learning through their stories of God who is faithful. Some of these people have 
left their country and left with nothing, right? I'm sure you've heard the story over and over, Bill. Yes. Or they've trucked from one country to the other because they had to get out because of it was the war or they've lost children. And so when I sit with them, I'm encouraged. I'm built up in my faith. When I, I'm when I'm on the phone, sorry, I'm thinking of sitting. When I'm on the phone with them, I'm I'm growing in my faith. So to me, this is a winning situation for me. It's not just something I do because it's my job. It's because I'm growing and I'm I'm enjoying connecting and learning from them. I think that is so powerful. I have learned in my own life as well, like you are learning and have learned, that when we serve, we actually are the ones who become greater and better for it. And so uh, maybe someone's watching today and they're inspired. They go, you know what, maybe I want to do something. What could someone do today in a practical way to help someone who maybe is older in their community? What, what are a couple things that they could do? Um, you know what, I was thinking that through that. Uh, I want to just share a few stories of some of our older adults and what they are doing. I don't know if that will help someone trying to um, bring someone into that fold, but they, uh, we've got some older adults who are actually delivering food for our food bank, which is really amazing to me. And that they are finding they're so fulfilled because they're doing something, right? Right. Um, we have some who are taking the boxes that are going out to the food bank and they're drawing on them. And when they're drawing on those boxes, they're putting encouraging words or pretty pictures or something to encourage those who are getting our food. Um, then there's also people who are out reading. You can go in, when, when you can go back into schools, you can go out and you can read. They could read with the kids. They can be buddies for them. We have interns in our church right now. And so some of them are going to be praying for those interns and connecting on the phone, encouraging them. Um, and then there's also the fact that we could sit down and get a list of all, all those older adults that we have and find out what their trades were or their giftings and take those giftings and use them. Maybe someone was a plumber. So why can't they go into someone's home and do some work for them? It's a lot cheaper than having someone come sometimes. Um, I think there's lots of opportunities to, to use our older adults. I think that is great. Well, thank you for sharing some of those really practical, creative ideas, how we can engage. And it's maybe just as simple as picking up the phone today and calling someone who is just waiting for someone to reach out and say, you matter. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed talking to you today and appreciate all that you're doing to make our community better. Thank you so much.